It would be better. Sorry. So, thank you very much. Um, in order to address the question asked today, um, I will have in mind the objective stated for MIFID of establishing, and I'm quoting here, establishing a safer, sounder, more transparent, and more responsible financial system working for the economy and society as a whole. I will look into whether MIFID has succeeded in improving the ability of capital markets to make the demand for capital from the real economy meet the supply of capital from end investors, genuine investors, with three criteria in mind. One has been done in a transparent manner, two price, three with the consequence of serving the real economy and society. Let's first have a look at transparency. Facts first. The fact is that around 40% of European equity volumes today are traded over the counter, OTC, and so-called dark pool volume represent about 6% of equity volumes. That means that 46%, give or take 1 or 2%, there's always debates on you know, statistics, but about 46% of European equity volumes are done without pre-trade transparency. Let's go a bit deeper into the analysis. Um, it was estimated about a year ago by a very interesting report from the University of Frankfurt and Sellent uh, that 39% of all equity OTC trades are actually below what is called MIFID retail size of 7,500 euros. 9% are between MIFID retail size and standard market size. Uh, standard market size, um, which means that if you add the 39 and the 9, you have 48% of OTC trading under standard market size. And if you add to that the fact that 39% of trading volumes, OTC trading volume, is between standard market size and large in size, just as a reminder, we all know that large in size is the size that qualifies transactions for so-called dark pool trading. In other words, gives a waiver for a pre-trade transparency. Another 39% of OTC trading is under large in size. All in all, that means that 87% of OTC transactions are actually violate the spirit of MIFID. If not the letter, do not violate the letter because definition of OTC under MIFID 1 was very weak, was only in recital, recital 53. So, you know, it, it doesn't go against the law, but clearly goes against the spirit of free trade transparency that was essential to MIFID 1. We have to ask ourselves whether non-transparent markets uh, are still valid in terms of price formation and um, could not be disqualified in terms of economic usefulness if we don't remedy to the situation. Second criteria is best possible price. There was a report by uh, the predecessor of ESMA, Committee of uh, European Securities Regulators, in June 2009, that, that said that market fragmentation, I'm quoting here, has led to a higher number of executions on multiple venues, which ultimately increased cost of trading. There's a subtle exercise there of actual cost of trading has gone up, cost of transactions has gone down, but the net effect described by Caesar was that the net net price paid by investors was higher. Statistics there is a bit old. I uh, haven't done the work to update it, but we should ask ourselves whether that statistics is still valid. Conscious of time, so I will move swiftly to the third point. The third point is, are we serving the economy and society better? It's a well-known fact that market fragmentation has led to the development of high-frequency trading. High-frequency trading, also called HFT, represents today 35% of equity trading volume in Europe. HFT, as we know, is a subset of algorithmic trading and has many different sides to it. There is the arbitrage of prices between different trading venues, there's the trend following, which is a big one. There's market making as well. But there's also strategies based on different access to price information, different speed of execution, when we're not talking about direct market abuse. In some cases, not all the time. We have to discriminate between those cases, but sometimes also market abuse, quote stuffing, spoofing, painting the tape, a lot of those techniques. Um, a distinction must be made, and this is essential, 
between HFT that creates liquidity and HFT that creates volume. Only market making related HFT can be argued as bringing liquidity to the market as all other forms of HFT all almost create, sorry, only create volume. That was absolutely clear in the now famous flash crash of May 2010, during which 27, sorry, several, bil several billion dollars worth of equity contracts changed 27,000 times in less than 14 seconds, leading to a market crash. That incident taught us two things. It was not only about rogue algorithms or, you know, then you just correct the algorithm and, and everything is fine. It was much more fundamentally demonstrating the fact that the bulk of HFT trading is about trend following and trend following reinforces pre-existing trends and that goes against genuine and investors' interest. We at Finance Watch have led a number of discussions with genuine end investors and we do have anecdotal evidence of genuine end investors telling, telling us they've been crowded out by HFT, which basically gets ahead of them when it comes to trading. This is not true of all HFT, I'm repeating myself, and we do have to make a distinction between HFT that brings liquidity and HFT which is about trend following. Conclusion. Despite its stated intentions, MIFID I has not reached the objective of improving market fairness, transparency, liquidity and price competitive, competitiveness sorry, uh, with a view of improving corporations' access to capital markets and protecting investors. It has done some steps in that direction, but we're far from it. Um, we also think at Finance Watch that the report uh, adopted by the Econ Committee in November 2010, so-called Swinburne report, contains many helpful suggestions that should be considered in the MIFID uh, review process. Um, we at Finance Watch will be making a number of concrete proposals on the topics addressed today and the many other topics we could not address, such as commodity derivatives, investor protection and responsible sales. Thank you. Very good. Well, thank you very much for getting us off to a, a good start.